Um, first of all, let me just say, well done. Um, the point about um, the efforts here on the Cape being extraordinary uh, is true. Uh, I think it's a model that deserves to be examined and emulated elsewhere. And, you know, the mantra that we hear, of course, is homeless prevention. And I think you hit it right on the head. Uh, you know, how do you sell it to the, to the public at large? Particularly a public that is going through difficult times. Everyone is concerned. Everyone is harboring uh, an uncertainty that really causes fear. And what I would suggest is that's exactly the argument to make. I remember reading recently an op-ed piece in the Cape Cod Times uh, by Bob Mark, who I'm sure you all know, because it makes economic sense. This has got nothing to do with compassion or altruism or quote-unquote human services. It's about the bottom line. And the bottom line is for a $300,000 uh, appropriation, um, you're saving money. You're probably saving maybe three quarters of a million, maybe in excess of a million. And if you did this statewide, what would that translate to in terms of taking care of the taxpayers? In these in this moment, in terms of our, our history, both here, throughout the Commonwealth, and nationally, that's the argument that will resonate. Because all you're hearing is cut, cut, cut. But those cuts cannot be, they can't contradict common sense. And you can't cut a program that is predicated on saving money in, a, not in the long run, but in the short term. I mean, nobody that I'm aware of is an advocate for homelessness. Again, it doesn't make sense. It hurts our economy. Uh, as Jim Crocker was saying, you know, it, it can become a PR uh, problem that creates social tensions within the community. Uh, no one would embrace that. So, yes, the answer is homeless prevention. And the model is here. We don't need to go anywhere else to develop the, the program. The program is alive and well. It just needs the fuel to sustain it and to expand it. Um, and I will take that message. I will see the governor soon. Um, and I'm going to review for him uh, what I heard here today. Um, so keep hope alive. Mm -hmm. But it, the way to sell it is to sell it on an economic argument. And it does make sense. And uh, when it comes to veterans, um, you know, the veterans are a constituency that has popular support from the political leadership from the right to the left. You know, we haven't even begun to understand the dimensions of the order of magnitude of the services that are going to be necessary for veterans. This is nothing. What there was this Nobel Prize winner, Joseph Stieglitz, that talked about the cost of the war in Iraq at $3 trillion and everyone, you know, just shrugged it off. Well, a substantial piece of that $3 trillion is to meet our moral obligations to the men and women that we sent to war. And it's going to be much more expensive than what we've witnessed in the past. It's going to be more expensive than what in the aftermath of Vietnam and the aftermath of World War II. You know, I've been to Bethesda. 
I've been to Walter Reed. I've met with these veterans. The problem is enormous. And it's a lifelong problem. Meryl, you know about mm -hmm. the problem. I mean, there are organic brain issues. There are emotional issues. The, the mental health services that are going to be required for, for that particular constituency are substantial. In terms of loan modifications, a great example of how the system didn't work. I don't want to get into campaign finance, but I dare say the 25%, Nancy, that you're talking about, okay, um, that's 25% of a much smaller universe that's out there. But the, you know, the banking lobby were in a position to stop a reform that, in my judgment, would have accelerated the resolution of the foreclosure issue by conferring on the bankruptcy courts the ability to cram down, in other words, to reduce the principal that was owed on a house. They do it for your car, they do it for your rental property, they do it for your yacht, they do it for your airplane, they do it for everything else, but not for the primary residence. And that's the problem. They blocked it. And I pushed, I made every effort to push that reform through. We get, we were blown away. And my roommate, Senator Dick Durbin for Illinois, pushed it in the Senate. Couldn't get it off the ground. So what we're faced with are these voluntary programs with an effort to outreach, and you were kind in terms of your description of the laborious nature of beginning the process and servicing people to the end with, I dare say, a number nationally that's much less than 25%. Congratulations if you're doing 25%. But what they're doing is that by as a result of that, we've extended, I believe, the difficult economic times we're in rather than bite the bullet to move on. So there's a lot of work to be done, both at the state, the local, uh, and the national level. What can you do about it? You know, just keep trucking. And get commitments from elected officials that they're going to do the right thing, not just the moral thing, but what makes sense economically in terms of um, people's, taxpayers' ability to pay. And if you can save, if you can save, you know, 50% with an investment of 300000 to me that seems to make a lot of sense. <clears throat> and yeah, you know, Rick doesn't like to talk about, because it sounds so repetitive, about homeless prevention. We don't want any homeless people on Main Street. We don't want any homeless people on any street in America. How do we do it? We do it the thoughtful, rational, respectful, common sense way which is to prevent homelessness to begin with, and to provide the services that the VA provides, that others provide, so that it doesn't have to be the problem that we didn't look at and just decided to do it the easy way. But don't let people talk about cuts without asking them what they're going to cut. Don't let the political leadership off the hook without being specific. Don't let candidates for office stand up and say, oh, cut, 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 there's a lot of waste in government. Tell me where it is. Tell me where it is and tell me what you would do. Don't give me those broad brushes. That's the coward's way of doing it.